This episode is sponsored by FX's Kindred, the original series only on Hulu. Based on Octavia E. Butler's best-selling novel, FX's Kindred centers on Dana James, a young black woman and aspiring writer. Dana begins to settle into her new home in Los Angeles and is violently pulled back and forth in time. She emerges at a 19th century plantation and is confronted with secrets she never knew ran through her blood. FX's Kindred, all episodes now streaming only on Hulu. This episode is brought to you by Carvana. Let's say you need a new car. Well, a new used car. A uh, now this is my groove car. A you car. Now, what if you could seal the deal and order it to your door 100% online? Buyer's remorse, no such thing. Take a week to love it or return it. Sound good? Carvana, they'll drive you happy. Availability may vary by market. Visit Carvana.com or download the app. Tanya. Boy, Matanya, indeed. What's it doing? Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome hello. back to... Hello, uh, everybody. <laughs> hello. Yeah. Welcome back to uh, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. I am Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, we are at season two, episode four already. Yeah, yeah. I know it's, mo- crazy, it's, it's moving right? along. Yeah, it's crazy. I think so. So uh, yeah. uh, I want to... Um, and, and I haven't told you about this, but no, this I'm going to, yeah, out this of the is blue here. This oh, I is, like this. I like this, this cutting edge com- stuff. This is completely out of the blue here. Uh, a guy sent me a message the other day and I'm looking here to try to find okay. his name. Um, he, he likes our show. Oh, cool. And he likes our show better than the other King of the Hill shows, which I don't think there are any. But, uh, well, there, there, there was, there was, <laughs> there's some, there's some still releasing I, episodes, but I'm, I'm just going to sure. pretend like there aren't any. Okay. But, um, uh, he sent me a message and boy, I'm having trouble finding it. But, uh, anyway, let me give you the, the, um, the gist of this message. Okay. The gist of this message is, um, I like your show. I listen to it when I'm walking. Uh, but you guys miss some things. You don't necessarily get everything right all the time. And so at this point in reading this message, there are one or two ways that I could react. I could either be like, screw you, get out of here. You know, we're doing our own thing. Or I could be like, oh yeah, really? What, how can, how can we help? You know, how can, how can we do better? Yeah, for sure. And so I responded that way with, um, well, I'd love for you because he, he offered to put together kind of a document for us to uh, validate some of the facts. Okay. And so what I'm telling you is I believe we have a uh, producer in the midst of our listeners okay. who is going to be kind of a fact checker for us. Um, okay. I wish I could find that message because I would love to call his name out right now and tell you exactly who he is, but I can't find it. Well, that's great. Any help? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, I I think that any help is good help, honestly. Oh, any help is good help. Absolutely. Yeah. That and, I mean, I... Uh, and the guy really cared about the fact that we get it right. And I, so I, I, he might have better totally, information or he might actually yeah. have the... Because I don't have the DVDs and the DVDs do have a lot of extras. Hey, and I'm totally yeah, down so, with it. I'm, I mean, I'm, I think I'm working with be, the material that we have. Hulu doesn't have all the in-depth dive on it. Yeah. No. So. No. So I, I am really looking forward to getting that first one. Uh, sir, if you will send me another message, I would appreciate it because I can't find that one. 
Uh, and maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe I'm losing a bunch of messages. But uh, anyway, we want to thank everybody for listening. And yeah, absolutely. Um, if you've got something to uh, to tell us or tell us that we're doing something wrong, super happy to listen and uh, take any and all uh, feedback. But uh, anyway, dude, reach out to me again <laughs> because we would love your help. Oh, absolutely. So we are on season two, episode four. This is Hill Halloween. Halloween. Uh, obviously a, so a uh, Halloween episode. A Halloween episode, a holiday episode. October 26th, 1997. Uh, yeah. So uh, we start uh, Tuesday, October 28th. Uh, that's where this episode starts. And uh, this episode is one of those that um, it starts differently than you've seen on any other episode, like it's an overhead shot. Yeah. So the one that it brings back to mind to me is the original one where they start by working on the, they're working on the truck. Yeah. They said the with. neighborhood or yeah, whatever. It kind yeah. of feels like that one, you know, but it is nighttime. And, uh, what we see is somebody drawing an outline around somebody like, like somebody's dead on the ground. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, we find out, uh, once the chalk goes around his face that it is Dale, he, uh, Dale's laying on a piece of wood and Hank has been tracing him with chalk to, to do a body outline. Yeah. And he's got his cigarette in his mouth still. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, uh, they're afraid that it looks like that the guy died with his tongue, tongue sticking, sticking out because yeah, of the <laughs> That's cigarette. Right. That's right. Uh, he's and Dale's like, uh, let me try again. I can look deader. No way, man. Which is <laughs> dead is dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, they, uh, we're talking about uh, Hank building basically a haunted house for the school. Yeah, he says he's the general contractor he of the school's the haunted house. He is the general contractor. We've yeah. got Boomhauer up uh, being hung uh, in the garage at the same time, and he yeah. uh, he starts uh, uh, griping about the fact that he's been in that harness for a very long time. Yeah, he's uh, talking about a dang old wedgie city up here, man. <laughs> dang old wedgie city. Well, yeah. it's a small price to pay, Boomhauer. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, Hank goes on to talk about how he's the school's haunted house uh, general contractor. And it uh, it's his responsibility to bring the job in on time. Under, under budget, budget and over scary. Over scary. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, you know. And then Bill. Yeah. Bill. Bill, Bill picking comes his in. ass. Bill comes in and says, you know, it's a dang soul thing. I got a, I got a wedgie Myself too. Myself too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Bill is talking about his wedgie with a ax sticking out of his head, which is wonderful. Uh, and then we hear Peggy calling for Hank. Uh, Tell her it's dinner, dinner time. time. I'm yeah. stirring in the cheese. She's powder. stirring <laughs> the cheese now. So yeah, but uh, Hank's like, uh, "Hey, peg leg, can you come out here and give me a hand?" And and you know, all the guys are kind of like giggling and going off to the side or whatever. And so they want to uh, try it out on Peggy. Yeah, and see try what get a, get a gotcha moment from her. Right. And so uh, he's like, "Hey, peg leg." And I, again, I love when he calls her peg. Yeah. Leg. Hey, peg leg. Can you come out peg here? I want you to help me with something. And, and then he shoves a witch in her face, and everybody's laughing. It hits her with a gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah, it gets her. And uh, she's like, <laughs> it took a year of my life off. Take a year of my life <laughs> off, which just sounds so weird how she said it. Year off of, year off of my life. And that's right. And, you know, we find out that, that Hank really wants to uh, give Bobby the same kind of Halloween he had when he was a kid. Yeah, and then he, he kind of reminisces a little bit about it, too, here, here in the... Uh, oh, I guess it's further down. He's gonna he's gonna scare the pants off the kids, is what he says. Yeah. Right. And then he he talks about having the perfect Halloween, uh, just like when he was a kid. And then we go into a flashback again of the boys as uh, as kids. Kids all dressed up. Hank yeah. is Hank is wearing his his uh, little his devil goofy outfit, goofy little devil suit. Yep, and he's running up and down the streets. And then they they end up at this lady's house. Well, if you look too at uh, Boomhauer, Boomhauer's is funny because it's not a white sheet; it's a sheet, right. but it's got That's flowers right. or it's, something. It's like, like a flower it's like a, It looks like a seventies, yeah, like right. a seventies pattern. And it, also Dale uh, dressed up kind of like a hippie. Yeah, he's got he's got the tie dye shirt and the piece. Thing on his head and all that stuff and then bill for some reason is a convict so <laughs> yeah yeah i don't i don't know <laughs> not real sure what's going on there but yes boom hours is my favorite because of the flowers on the yeah, sheet and, and the dang old boom man yeah and so <laughs> the lady opens the uh opens the door and uh of course uh boom is talk about a dang old dang dang old boo yeah. And then Dale, as a child, I just love these flashbacks, by the way. Yeah, I Dale, do too. Dale, as a child, is you like... got any candy you cigarettes? Got any candy yeah. cigarettes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we move on to uh, them only getting one piece of candy, and they're they're very upset about the fact that it's only one. Um, 
And then we see the boys out doing some pranks. Yeah, but this is the funny thing about the pranks. So they do the pranks, and they egg the house, and they toilet paper it, and then the last thing they say is, Dale's house is next. That's right. <laughs> like, like, why now are you going to go? Like, he's right there with y'all. Y'all are going to go you know, destroy his house. They're knocking down Hank's mailbox. I mean, it yeah. says hills on yeah, it. it says hills on it. Down. Yeah. yeah. But they're egging houses. They're toilet paper and everything, just like kids do on Halloween. They're shaving cream, uh, cars. Uh, they're doing all the stuff, and then you find out that they're doing their own parents' houses. Yeah, it's, so, I guess it's safe from sure. getting in trouble. So then we get back to Hank, and he's like, I think I'll go call my mom. You know? yeah. <laughs> so I guess he feels bad about knocking her, her uh, uh, mailbox over. Uh, Which so, is really funny, because right after that, when they come back to, you know, you know, reality and there's mm-hmm. Hank, he kind of looks like he has like a look on his face where he looks a little ashamed. He's, he's yeah. almost like ashamed or tearing up <laughs> like, or something. Oh, yeah, I can't yeah, really yeah. talk. I yeah. can't really tell Bobby that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we go to uh, Peggy. Uh, she's inviting Luann to come on down to Megalomart with her because uh, they've got a special on. You buy two masks, they'll, they'll put punch the nose, the nose. Holes in for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luann says she can't go because she is going to uh, a fellowship. youth fellowship meeting. Yep, a youth fellowship meeting. Uh, and then, um, we get, uh, she says that, uh, she's going to deliver hot meals to old people and, and then, then blow on and it, then blow on them. Yeah. <laughs> that that's, killed that's me. my favorite uh, that, part. That yeah, killed me. Blow on them. I got a funny thing about this Dalmatian thing here. A little trivia question. Yeah. So we and, end up uh, with, with Peggy and Bobby and Hank all at Megalomart and they're trying to pick out Bobby a costume. Yeah. And he, uh, he grabs the Dalmatian costume, which is kind of funny because at this same time, uh, Pamela Adlon, who voices Bobby, uh, she was doing the voice on the Disney animated TV show, 101 Dalmatians, the oh, series. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I wonder if that, I, I mean, I'm, I I'm pretty imagine, sure. Yeah. yeah. She was doing the voice of a, a Dalmatian called Lucky, but I thought that was a cool fact and uh, our fact checker out there uh heck yeah man Check y- those you're facts. gonna have to back me up on that because i'm right. i'm pretty sure that's the golden truth that's right but uh so they are looking through these uh what what is classic halloween packaging to me those boxes that had the cellophane on the front of them you know and oh the with like the and them. it's got the uh, the 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 clip at the top that's black the, like the black plastic piece that hangs well even before that they would put them in in cardboard boxes. Oh, okay. And the cardboard box had the cellophane on the front of it, so you could just see the mask and what was folded up behind it. Yeah, but we they just would all used, come uh, in these separate boxes. Yeah, now they just hang on. Those well, not for Halloween costumes. When I was growing up, it was whatever clothes that you didn't really fit. Any, I was a werewolf <laughs> one too. year, and like the pants were kind of flooding, <laughs> so my mom just cut them into shorts and made them yeah. werewolf shorts. Yeah. And I was just literally, I was just like werewolf shorts. I just had uh, mascara for hair on my yep. face and chest, yep. and then my shorts were cut up with a little bit of blood on them. Yep. There I was you like go. seven. <laughs> yeah, my kids, um, I had a boy and a girl, um, and I, one year I did, um, I would go out all all the way on some of their costumes, and one yeah. year my son, he couldn't have been more than five or six, maybe eight at the most, uh, he went as Leatherface, and oh, that's awesome. I'm telling you, I went to Goodwill, I bought him a wig, just like a black, you know, hair wig and cut it all down and then bought a, uh, a rubber mask, but I cut it into pieces and then re-sewed it together. Oh, wow. Uh, went That's and, awesome. <laughs> went and bought a, uh, 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 an apron, stained it with fake blood, um, and then bought a plastic chainsaw beat it all up, spray painted it a little bit, threw blood on it and all this stuff. Man, he looked That's like, awesome. He looked like a tiny little leather face. Yeah, <laughs> That's it was, great. It was really great. Uh, and my daughter that year, I believe she went as an undead prom queen. Okay. Uh, and so she had a fancy dress and she had dead roses and a broken crown and just looked like a zombie. Oh, that's you know, awesome. It was, yeah. it was really, yeah, that was, that's one of my favorite Halloweens, but they are going through, uh, all of these costumes in these boxes, which I love that part. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Hank is questioning what they're finding. How here. is a Dalmatian scary? Yeah. yeah. And then Peggy's like, well, they can bite you. They go right for, for the, the groin. groin. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but he's asking, you know, where are the monsters and the ghosts and the vampires and stuff? I see Elmo, Elmo Aladdin, Aladdin, and then Jenny McCarthy. Jenny McCarthy. He's like, I don't even know what these things are. Uh, so next thing, we end up going uh, over to the uh, uh, the youth fellowship meeting uh, where they also hold the CPR classes. 
Uh, and uh, they're, they've got a special speaker in tonight, and it's a new member of their church. It's really funny how they, they announced her, though. They yeah. announced her as uh, a woman who has made herself, or sorry, not a woman, but a member of our church who has yeah. made herself known in a very short time through a series of gutsy letters, complaints, and threats. Miss <laughs> Judy right. Harper, That's everybody. Right, yeah. And I love the fact that she likes that intro. I mean, she on the look on her face oh, is yeah, just so she smug. She loves it. Yeah. And the... Uh, I didn't really hear it in her voice, so hats off to Sally Field for this, yeah. for like the voice acting that's in this. Amazing that but that's amazing. But it's Sally Field, it's Sally yeah. Field for Junie Harper. And I, I didn't hear it. I'm going to have to go back no, and I'm going to listen either. to it again to see if I could hear it at all. But yeah. uh, at first, uh, you know, I, usually you could hear who they are, but yeah, I really yeah, couldn't yeah. hear, hear I that I literally one. watched the, the end of this right before we started recording. And I would have never told you. No, that I would have never guessed. Field. It just doesn't sound. I mean, it sounds southern, whereas everybody else sounds mm-hmm. Minnesotan or something. Mm-hmm. They sound like they're from that that way. Yeah. But she sounded really southern, so I guess that that would be reminiscent of Sally Field's voice. She's got a very southern southern voice. So she says, "Hey, why don't we start things off with a little quiz?" This is Junie Harper speaking. Or I Sally hope it's Field. open yeah. Bible. And, yeah. And Lou Ann's like, "I hope it's open Bible." And uh, now she starts holding up pictures. She holds up a picture of a witch, and she says, can you tell me what this is? And Luann's like, a witch? She says, that's very good. What's your name? Luann Platter. She introduces herself. Uh, Luann, you answered that so, so fast. fast. Yeah, do you know any witches yourself? Do you yourself? know any witches yeah. yourself? Like, yeah. we're in, like it's 1700 Salem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it does feel very much, very red scarish here. You know, she's, she's like, uh, do you know any communists? Do you, yeah, uh, do you know any communists? <laughs> <laughs> but she asked her if she knows any witches, and, and Luann's argument is witches aren't real. And she says, yes, they are. They even have their own holiday. And then she quizzes them again. This is not a real hard quiz. But she quizzes them again and asks them, uh, you know, what October holiday is associated with witches, goblins, and Satanists. And uh, Luann, of course, answers Halloween. Luann's feeling really yeah. good about herself. Which is funny point. that Halloween really is, uh, I don't really, th- like, I know that most of what we celebrate is, like, uh, commercialized Halloween, obviously. Right. But the actual Halloween is called All Saints Eve. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think it has the same connotations as witches and goblins and Satanists. No, I as think it, it does. was a uh, druid holiday. Yeah, or a, yeah, it was a something druid like thing. That. Yeah, yeah. I think it's where we get a lot of our stuff, but uh, that's for a different podcast. Uh, so uh, she is she is uh, quizzing all of these these kids that are sitting around. It's weird to me that that this youth group is full of so many uh, what look like adults. Yeah. You know? <laughs> There's a lot don't. of adults in this youth group. It's a little sketchy. <laughs> they, seem, they seem a little old to be part of a youth yeah. group. But uh, anyway, she's telling uh, Luann how smart she is, and Luann's like, thank you for noticing, which is a weird way to respond to that. But uh, now we go back to uh, the Megalomart, and, uh, boy, there is quite a line. Uh, there is a, a huge a big line. line of people waiting uh, to check out. And uh, they, they, uh, uh, it's Hank and Peggy and Bobby there in line, and and uh, the the issue is that they still need a costume for Bobby. Yeah, uh, that's what Peggy says. And but at least we got our treats. And then Hank starts picking through the treats. You've got your Eat Wells and your sugar free low fat fun bars. Yeah. <laughs> and so he questions Peggy, you know, what what is this crap? And uh, he goes, it's it's Halloween. It's not. It's for trick or treaters. It's not for diabetics. Yeah. Peggy's like, well, I don't want to gain ten pounds like I did last year. And Bob, Bobby gets very defensive, extremely defensive. Like, so don't eat it. <laughs> Just yeah, leave, leave it there. there. Nobody no one said you could touch my candy That's anyway. Right. Nobody yeah. said you could touch my candy anyway. So uh, we we get past that without a uh, costume for Bobby. Still, uh, we get back to the youth group with Junie Harper, and uh, she's still quizzing people or telling people about. Uh, it feels like she's kind of preaching about Halloween at this point. Right? Yeah, and it's kind of weird what she says too, because uh, she makes she she <laughs> makes this big deal about Halloween being scary, but I mm-hmm. feel like this youth group is more terrifying than anything that's on the streets on Halloween. Oh yeah. So absolutely. she tells them that the ancient druids celebrated Halloween by eating babies by the light of their jack o' lantern. <laughs> And then they danced. Yeah, and then they danced. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you dance? Why after wouldn't you, you eat dance a baby by the, light, a of baby a by the sure. light of a jack o' lantern? Uh, and it's then customary. We we are all the way at Wednesday, October 29th. And that's what I like about the show, too, is this is the first show where you have these like 
date that shows like the date, like a setup yeah, for I the don't. day by because they're going day by day on this episode yeah. through this whole saga with uh, Junie Harper. So I, I really think that's neat. I don't remember that being a thing, and I don't remember it being a thing going forward either. No, but it is a uh, maybe a very when cinematic she falls episode. out of the plane or something. Maybe that's a date thing, but I I just don't remember there being dates on the screen like this. No, I don't either. Well, I like I said, this is, is a very one. cinematic episode, and I think it's and this one kind of uh, this is a very fact checker type episode. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know John Rice did this episode, and he also did the the episode uh, Keeping Up with the Joneses, yeah. which I think two those two That's episodes are both really yeah the cigarette, cigarette episode, episode yeah. which they're both cinematic. I think these two episodes have a lot of like That's true different angles and yeah. different different kind of stuff that they do. Yeah. So uh, Hank is uh, again. We're we're all the way to Wednesday now. Uh, this is the 29th, I believe, right? Isn't that what I said? Yeah, I think so. And uh, Hank is is basically passing down the costume to Bobby that the grandma kept. Uh, he's very happy that uh, grandma kept his old costume and uh, it is that devil costume that we saw him in earlier. Yeah. And Hank is also <laughs> telling him and telling Bobby that is that uh, he had a little laugh that went along with this. Yeah, and then he does this cackle. <laughs> he does a ha 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 you know, that kind of thing. And then and then you get Bobby laughing and it's um, not so much. It's not not quite the yeah, same it's, thing. It's more creepy than scary. Yeah. His dad says, uh, he says scary, and then his dad will goes, well, no, it was disturbing. <laughs> it was disturbing. Yeah, That's it was right. Disturbing, it was a little Bobby, more cringeworthy. But, uh, the boy ain't right. Um, now we get uh, Luann comes in, and she is all kinds of worked up, which is weird to me because with the dates and everything, it seems like she was at church last night. Mm -hmm. Why is she worked up now? Maybe she came in late, or yeah, or maybe it this just seems is, like this maybe is, she didn't have an opportunity to Luanne bring it up in conversation. Doesn't seem like a person who can hold things in. No, she doesn't. She's yeah. not logical either. You know. So she <laughs> comes in. She comes in saying, uh, "Uncle Hank, Aunt Peggy, I have terrible news. Halloween is a satanic holiday. It was invented by, by the, the Druish. <laughs> yeah, the Druish. No, honey, not Druish. The Druish. Yeah, Peggy. Peggy uh, corrects her. Does there. correct her. Uh, Hank is is on the defensive immediately because Hank loves Halloween. Uh, he wants to know where he heard the garbage. Uh, she says, well, it's the truth. Uh, trick or treating is devil worship. And then he brings up, uh, she brings up Junie Harper. Junie Harper says, so, uh, Hank is like, no, it's just good, clean fun. It's got nothing to do with the devil. I don't want to hear any more about this or your foolishness and all that stuff. Uh, Which is crazy, you know, like, I couldn't imagine somebody putting me up in their house and then I come running in screaming about it. Oh, y'all are all Satanists. Y'all are doing this wrong. She's just crazy. <laughs> She is. She's very susceptible to people's influence. Or yeah. Junie anything, Harper says so. Anything somebody says, yeah, she is. She is on board with it. Well, that and, uh, whenever she's talking to, whenever like the way Junie Harper talks to her makes her feel smart. Yeah, and nobody else does. That's true. So she gets like this, you know, this sensation from that. I guess one of my favorite scenes in this is uh, when Hank says something about it not being about the devil. It pans back to Bobby, and he picks up the tail and looks at his costume. And yeah, he's like, he's uh, like uh, I'm dressed yeah. like the devil. So, <laughs> yeah, there's there's a, a lot of those type uh, uh, moments in this one. Uh, and then Peggy, of course, is always a defender of uh, of Luann. Uh, she comes back and says, uh, "What's wrong with you? Somebody just." <laughs> Someone put something exciting in her brain, and she just wanted to share it or yeah. show it to us. <laughs> and so uh, now we go back to Miss Junie Harper. She uh, she loves her cat, by the way. Yeah, loves the cat, like cat a cat lady. Joseph, Joseph the cat, of course the 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 biblical name. Yeah, I would the biblical imagine. name. Yeah, and she uh, Luann is over there telling her, you know, how they don't believe her, and she's she's quizzing her, you know. Um, they, they just made me look stupid. And, and Junie Harper's like, well, the, it's the devil, yeah. you know, because the devil always wants to make you look stupid or whatever. And that way he can get more influence on you or whatever, whatever yeah. <laughs> peddling influence. <laughs> it's easier for him to trick you. You know, you can't resist him. So, uh, then, uh, they, they continue talking about that. And you can see that Luann is, is really under the influence of this Junie Harper at this point. Uh, she, she says, do you understand what I'm talking about here? And she's like, well, I don't know. And she's like, Satan be gone. Yes. <laughs> she just shouts it out. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah. Now I see it. Yeah. Now I, I see it. Well, it. okay. Yeah. 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 Now she sees it. If somebody yells at her, 
Uh, but she she talks about how Satan's getting very popular these days, and that's why she is sponsoring a Hallelujah a House, Hallelujah House, which yeah. is a uh, righteous alternative to wicked haunted houses. It is a righteous alternative. Now, I will tell you this, Rusty. I was part of one of these one time. Oh wow! I'm sorry. So Wait, uh, the part of a haunted house or a Hallelujah House? It was a hall- kind of a, uh, hallelujah, kind of a hallelujah, hallelujah house. Yeah, house. I don't remember what they called it, but it was sponsored by my church. And it was one of those things where uh, you go in and somebody's had an abortion or something like that, right? And then, mm-hmm. oh, my God, you know, and they show it as scary or, or whatever. Yeah. Here's what happened at that Hallelujah House, which I'll just call it that. Um, I don't know what we called it. But um, they buried a guy in the ground uh, so that he could kind of pop up out of the dirt or whatever. And they buried him a little too far. And he lost all his circulation. <laughs> oh, wow. To, like in the middle of this thing, this, they had to run out there crazy. and dig this guy up. Dig him up real fast. Yeah, they're that's like, scary. oh, my God, he's You know, that's die. scarier than him popping <laughs> that's up. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it was a little frightening. The guy lost all his circulation and stuff. So Wow. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that's great. That's insane. Yeah. yeah, no, I've never been a great part memory. of a Hallelujah house. Uh, not that I can remember. I remember there was always... Uh, Around Halloween, all the churches in the area, like those, some of the Baptist churches in the area, would throw something the same day as Halloween. You know, yeah. they'd call it a yeah. fall festival or something. Well, this, these days, they, they're big on the trunk and treats. Trunk you know? and, yeah, you got the trunk or treats, and then you got the fall festivals, yeah. and then you got the pumpkins yeah. and hay rides. Yeah. With, yeah. you know, the less spooky things. They always stuff tend for to go with the, the, the hay ride or the, 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 um, uh, the, the pumpkin carving, scarecrow, oh, scarecrow. And the pumpkin carving, yeah. yeah, and stuff like that. What I, you know, what I really don't like is when they have the pumpkin contest and they don't let them carve the pumpkins. Instead, yeah. they just paint on them. You know what I don't like too? That's yeah, I don't like. Well, I don't. Well, well, yeah, I agree with that. And then I don't like too when they. When they say that there's going to be like tons of drugs in your kid's candy. Yeah. I'm 32 years old and I'm still looking for candy with drugs in them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great clip right yeah. there. That's your, that, that's your clip from this show. There you go. <laughs> I'm 32 years old and I'm still looking for candy with drugs in them. Uh, so Luann does the unthinkable and tells uh, Miss Junie Harper that Hank is running a haunted house down at, at the school. The school. And she's yeah. a heavy litigator. so She is a heavy litigator. Uh, we then go to uh, Hank and Dale working on a guillotine, and uh, they want to make sure they get the raise and the... the yeah, the, the rise and run. Rise and the, the run, trough. correct, because he doesn't want any blood coming back at his severed head. It needs to go away from the severed head. That's right. And this is where we meet Principal Moss. Uh, this is uh, for the, uh, first this is time. the first time we've met Principal Moss. Yeah, this is the first Moss. Uh, what I love about sighting. what I love about Principal Moss over the years, Carl Moss, is we find out that he was a good friend of theirs. He was on the football team. He was this. He was that. Yeah, yeah. Know. He was. A, he was. He's, he's somebody they know. Yeah, he's them. somebody yeah. they know. He, yeah, he could be the fifth beetle. Yeah, out he there could in have the, been. Yeah. in the alley. Yeah. So he comes in, and, uh, he, and he, you know, the thing about Hank is he's always respectful to him until he he can't be anymore, yeah. you know, because there, there does come a day when, when he can't be respectful to Principal Moss because Principal uh, Moss turns into a, a doofus yeah, yeah, at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's probably why they don't have him as the fifth Beatle. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. So uh, he brings in uh, Miss Junie Harper. And uh, Junie Harper is saying that uh, there is a separation of church and state and that they can't have this, uh, this uh, haunted house uh, unless they change some stuff up. And yeah. uh, You missed a joke real quick. Oh, uh, sorry. When uh, Principal Moss walks in, he tells Dale, he goes, well, this is a school. You have to take that <laughs> cigarette. cigarette outside. And he goes, yes, sir. And then he goes, Jackie says what? <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> Principal Moss says what? And then yeah. Dale does that dry laugh on the way yeah. out the door. Yeah, I, I don't know why Dale thinks it's okay to just smoke in the gym. He smokes anywhere. He really does. Like, if you notice in the show, it doesn't matter. He's around flammable. You got to think the guy works with flammable chemicals all day as a as a bug guy. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's a scene coming up that just floors me uh, with Dale um, when he gets a little scared. But, uh, yeah, she starts questioning uh, the skeleton. She uh, is talking about reading fortunes with casting of bones and things, yeah. uh, even though it's just a cardboard skeleton up on the thing or whatever. Uh, and then uh, she 
she takes a look at the witch and says, that's got to go because you can't have witches in these things. And, and Hank is basically at the point where he's like, I'm not taking any of this stuff out. I want these kids to have a real scary Halloween, um, you know, uh, and then uh, Miss Junie Harper uh, pops up with, uh, I'm thinking this whole house of horrors is wrong. Uh, and Bill's like, well, maybe we can we make it a house, a house of pancakes. Of pancakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just brainstorming Hill. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> Shut up, Bill. Uh, and so, uh, Hank is, Hank is steadfast in this. He's at the point where he's like, we either do this haunted house the right way or I'm not doing it at all. And, uh, says, what's it going to be? Yeah. We can't afford another lawsuit. They said, uh, That's they blew the Moss. budget yeah. fighting wheelchair ramps and left-handed <laughs> scissors, <laughs> left-handed scissors. <laughs> so <laughs> they do and exist though. Who, As a who, left-handed human being, they do have scissors but, that feel better in your hand. left -handed. Sure. And I can see that one, but who fights wheelchair ramps <laughs> is, is my question. Know. Well, I mean, if the, this, it's on the school budget. <laughs> and so Hank is like, you know what? That's the way it goes. Then, then Boomhauer, grab Hagatha. He's talking about the witch. Yeah, the witch, Hagatha. Hey, let's get out of here. Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> and then Bill pops up, well, kids sure do like pancakes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is a wonderful joke. Uh, and then we're back at the Hill House, and Hank is, you know, at, this is like a lot of the things we've talked about. It's just so touching because basically Hank wants to go all out because he's afraid Bobby's going to be a teenager next year and he's not going to go out and trick or treat anymore. And he wants to do it one more time with his son. You yeah. Know, so it's be the, with him and do all these things. So you know? now we're starting to get into like the moral part yeah, of the story yeah. and the whole, like it's all starting to tie together. So it's never about Halloween. It's just, about for Hank, it's just about him being able to share something with his son. Right. He, he feels like his son is reaching this point where on Halloween he's going to want to go hang out with his buddies instead of being there with his dad. And I guess that's yeah. uh, I haven't reached that that part yet in fatherhood, but I imagine that's a oh, it big so struggle. Yeah, yeah, I imagine that's a big struggle at being at being a dad with a, a growing boy. Kids sure do love pancakes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so, I know mine does. So. Uh, uh, we're yeah, again we're back at the Hill House, and uh, it's Hank and Lou Ann and Peggy in there, and they are. Uh, uh, Hank is going over how Bobby's going to be a teenager, and he's not going to want to do this anymore. Uh, it's our last Halloween together. Junie Harper ruined it, and all that. And honestly, Peggy, being very supportive, says, "You know, there's nothing about uh, separation of church and garage." In the Constitution. <laughs> yeah. And so she gives Hank the idea. Let's Make just a do a haunted garage. house in the garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Luann is quick to, to pipe up, and she's like, no, Uncle Hank, you can go to hell. <laughs> and so she's still worried about everybody going to, uh, to, to hell because they're participating in Halloween. Because Junie Harper said that a haunted house is the devil's mousetrap and fun is the cheese. Yeah, and he goes, Luann, just when I thought you said the stupidest thing ever, you keep talking. <laughs> Junie says I'm smart. That's what she says. So, Don't trick me into thinking I'm not. Yeah, so you can yeah, tell yeah, her yeah. anything, and she thinks that that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and then Peggy, being the... she got to keep it all simmered down. Yes, yes. For now, anyway. She's like, uh, number one, you know, Luann's not stupid, and Hank, uh, and neither is Hank's idea for a haunted house. You know, we can, you can have your haunted garage, and you can be smart. <laughs> That's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorites from this. Yeah, can, I like that. You yeah. can be smart. It is uh, summertime here in Central Texas, and I don't know about you, but I am already sweating. Oh yeah, uh, I've got swamp ass and ball sweat <laughs> more than I know what to do with. And you know, yeah. if uh, if it wasn't for Ballsy and their products, Ballsy. I'm sure right now I'd be able to smell my own balls. So I'm really, yeah. really, Not you great. know, thankful for their products. Yeah, you know, your cleanliness uh, is a reflection of you, uh, especially below the belt. Uh, and you know, I, I. I think about cleanliness a lot because, like, I've, I've got a beard. I've had one for a long time. You've got one. Um, but I never really think about taking care of my down under as I do my face. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think that a lot of people, you know, think about keeping their balls clean and fresh. No. I think that's a, a, a an endemic in uh, males is keeping our groin area clean. Yeah, because, I mean, it's no secret that balls are prone to odor, sweat, irritation. So, so you need something like Ballsy. Yeah, so guys, you need to upgrade your balls game with Ballsy. Yep. Uh, they've got quality, long-lasting products formulated to keep you fresh, comfortable, and confident. And for me... Yep. 
uh, I tried out the ballsy trimmer, mm. uh, the beard, the beard trimmer part of it. I oh, shaved my okay. mustache with That's it. That's the cool thing. It comes with both. both yeah, heads. it comes with the, yeah, it comes with both heads. So it's not like you have to use the same head on your face as you do your your intimate regions. Yeah, your intimate regions. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they got your sack covered with a ball wash, sack spray, and more. And I'll attest to the ball wash. My balls have never smelled cleaner and felt fresher ever sure. in the entirety of my life. So yeah, I took uh, a I took a small uh, sample of, of friends and family, and they said my balls smelled wonderful well that's good yeah, yeah. that's good my it, dog it was told uncomfortable me. after that yeah i'm still, sure it was, it was yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh you know when you go to ballsy uh you can get uh different things like like you can take a quiz to see where to start uh they have a sack pack uh the sack pack has all of it uh, it's yes, the, ultimate, the trifecta. It is the ultimate trifecta of products specially formulated to take care of your most prized possessions, which should be your balls. And the uh, big thing is, is it is made right here in the U.S. of in A. In the U.S. of A. That's right. And and it always will be. Always will be. Or so tell the people at Ballsy. Or so says Ballsy. So and says they Ballsy. Have over 200,000 currently satisfied customers with a 30-day money back guarantee so you've got to give it a try yeah. there's no risks involved yeah. and the only thing that could happen out of this is clean fresh balls that's what i'm saying right so what you need to do is go to ballwash.com uh put in promo code k-o-t-h as in king of the hill so ballwash.com promo code k-o-t-h and you'll receive 20 percent off your order of 50 dollars or more that's 20 percent off when you go to ballwash.com and put in promo code k-o-t-h H. So says Ballsy. Balls. Balls. Hey, Rusty. Hey, Mike. Your dog deserves tasty, healthy, real food, not kibble. Don't give him kibble. No, I, I like to give my dog food that's created by a vet that exceeds all industry standards. There you Fresh go. dog food, stable life. Uh, sorry, a, a stable shelf life and affordable. Uh, this this food here, Sundays for Dogs, Mike. It's Sundays 40, for Dogs? It's 40% less expensive Holy than leading crud. fresh brands. Yeah, and uh, you know it, it's it like you say it's created by a vet. It's shelf stable, which uh, I I don't get those dog foods that are in the freezer and refrigerator and stuff. That just seems like a lot. Uh, I've got a friend of mine who makes his own cat food, which is weird. But uh, it, it's especially weird when you could get it from Sundays for that's dogs. That's what I'm saying, right? You know, I mean, he's got cats, so he's weird anyway. But Well, he could feed it Sundays for dogs. And feed his cats to Sundays for dogs? It's created by a vet. It's fresh <laughs> dog food. Uh, it's uh, customized for dog size, breed, and activity level. So all he has to do is take a quick quiz and see if it's right for his pup. Yeah, you just go to sundaysfordogs.com. You take the quiz. Uh, best part about all this, uh, well, let me tell you about some of the benefits first. Uh, you're going to get uh, increased excitement uh, from your dog about eating, uh, which my dogs uh, are, are not super excited about eating because I buy them junk, uh, but not anymore. Uh, you'll get better stool, which, you know, if your dogs stay outside all day, that's a big deal. Uh, and you'll get more energy out of their out of your dogs, improve weight, softer coat, just a better life for your dogs yeah, if you feed them. This my stuff. dog loves it. Uh, yeah. It's real easy for her to eat. She's she's an older dog, but it's really easy for her to eat. And she's uh, one hundred and four. She's one hundred and four. Yes, right. and uh, the fact not that not in it's, dog years, not in dog years, in weird. human years. Yeah, she's yeah. extremely extremely old, <laughs> and I think it's due to eating Sundays for dogs. Sure. Uh, which the quality ingredients are really good for her health. The, yeah. the crap they put in, you know, a lot of the store brand is stuff junk, is just yeah. junk for them. Yeah. And uh, a lot of filler and stuff like that. It's and like she's, feeding your kid Doritos all day. Yeah, that's what know? it is. It's uh, like a, a bag that of Doritos. kid's going to stop up at some point. And Sundays for Dogs <laughs> is like a, a bag of carrots with... It is. It's like carrots and real meat and things just like good that. good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, if you go to sundaysfordogs.com and take that quiz and figure out the right plan for your pup, uh, the best part about that is you can get 35% off your first order if you use the code K-O-T-H, as in King of the Hill. K-O-T-H, and you'll get 30 Thirty-five percent off your order. Well, thirty-five percent—that's a big good. deal. That you know, most play, most of these things you hear is ten percent, but uh, for this one, you go to SundaysForDogs.com, enter K O T H as the code, and get thirty-five percent off. Yeah, that's great. Wolf. Watch us fight all through the night, deep in the heart of Texas. Uh, and then uh, um, Lou Ann is is got her feet pretty planted in this uh, Junie Harper world, and she says, Junie Harper says. Hank interrupts her and says, last time I checked, it wasn't Junie Harper's face in the stained glass window at the Arlen well, First, First Methodist. Methodist. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, Hank is Hank is now talking to Bobby, and he's talking to him about how you're going to be too old next Halloween to go out and uh, go trick or treating, which is a big surprise to Bobby. Yeah, huge one. surprise. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he he's doesn't, like, what? Yeah, yeah he's not ready. Is, this is the first time any of. I, I think like he, that I think is Hank is aging him up faster than Bobby is really like. He's not. You know, he's not there yet where the Hank thinks he is. Bobby is that kid that at 15 comes to my door with a pillowcase. And he's put like one mark on his face, and he, you know, <laughs> yeah, he's, too he's old. got like a couple drops of blood, <laughs> that's yeah, right. corn right. syrup with freaking yeah. red dye yeah. in it. Yeah, he just put absolutely no thought into it at None. this point. He's just so, there for the candy. Hank's taking Bobby out, and he's telling him, uh, he's basically telling him how to raise hell on Halloween. You know, he's got the eggs, he's got the toilet paper, and he says, you know, who can use a little respect right now is Dale, and they're gonna toilet paper and egg his house. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, poor Dale, number one. But if anybody deserves it, it's probably him. Probably Dale. Yeah, yeah probably Dale. Uh, so now we see, um, well, Hank, uh, by the way, the respect comment is because Hank told him, you know, it's a sign of respect. Yeah, it's a sign of respect to, to do that and stuff like yeah. that. And then you hear uh, Junie Harper standing outside hollering for a cat and right, stuff like calling that. Calling for Joshua. And yeah. then... Uh, yeah. Hank and Bobby have this interaction, and it's and then Hank's telling him, you know, there's a suddenly reminded of a Bible quote. So they direct their attention instead yep. of them, uh, you know, they were going to attack Dale's house. Now they direct their attention to Junie B. Harper, and he says, "Well, do unto others." And uh, Bobby, who at this time is showing maturity in, in his consciousness, says, I don't know, Dad, uh, this is vandalism. And vandalism isn't cool. And that he looks sounds at Bobby, very much like something you would hear in school. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Vandalism Definitely. Isn't cool. Vandalism yeah. isn't cool. And then he goes, Bobby, that attitude is a little immature, which is hilarious because <laughs> he's, you know, just the whole situation. Yeah. And he's like, uh, now, come on, you, you got to have some back skip in. Son shows, shows him how to shows throw, how to the throw toilet it properly paper yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, then uh, Junie Harper is, sees what's going on and she's like, I'm not afraid of you Satanists. Come on, boy. I won't be, you know, and all that. And, and, uh, Hank is trying to run Bobby out of there because, yep. uh, Bobby, they're the, both the, running. What's funny to me is the first thing that Bobby says is it's the fuzz. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like he's been watching too many TV shows or something. It's the so, fuzz. Yeah, so after. on this on this part here too. So she jumps in her car and when she's screaming, "I'm not afraid of you, saying this or whatever." And then she's chasing yeah. him down and she sees Bobby, but she runs oh. over her own cat and doesn't stop and doesn't stop. Yeah, she backs up over the cat and yeah. keeps going. So she hits it with the back tire, the front tire, yeah. then pulls out the driveway yeah. and then chases Bobby down. He gets caught on a fence. He does. Hank pulls him over the fence and then uh that's when they're talking about ditching the evidence and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, they end up behind the they end up behind the fence, uh quick ditch the evidence and so they chunk it. And this is the part I was talking about with Dale. It hits his house. Yeah, it hits his roof. And as soon as it does, he dives to the floor in his underwear. Well, number one, here's Dale smoking uh, and drinking with no clothes on. Watching the Jeffersons. Yeah, other than his his tidy whities And in the background, you hear... So it's the uh, it's not the Jeffersons it's uh, uh, Sanford and yeah, Son. Yeah, Sanford and Son. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Sanford yeah. and Son. And then you hear this clunk whenever the eggs and the toilet paper here is hit his house, and he just hits the deck. I got one for the fact checker. So Sanford and Son was from a TV show. They got it from England mm -hmm. called Stepford and Son. Yes, absolutely. I'll let him fact check me on that one. So what's funny to me is that he hits the ground. And and he's screaming. Yeah, like he's like he was ever. You know, I wonder if uh, Dale ever saw combat in Desert Storm or something. The reason why he's diving around I like this, know, I man. don't think the so. The dude has PTSD, but I think it's yeah. all because he is just so uh, uh, into the conspiracy theories and stuff like I think that. That's what it is. He's just a nutcase. What's funny to me is not him screaming and hitting the floor. It's when he sees a bug, he screams again. <laughs> There's a yeah. bug on the floor, and that's what he fights. He fights bugs all the time. So next thing we see is we're back at the Hank Hill house and uh, the uh, what I'm assuming is the sheriff. Yeah, county there. sheriff or something, police officer. Yeah, because some the guy's got a cowboy hat and a badge and the yeah, whole thing, yeah. right? Uh, and well, some is, some some uh, municipal cops uh, in some areas true, of Texas guess, yeah. have cowboy hats. Yeah, that's true. I know out in uh, West Texas, I, I, I was going to Colorado in 2019. I got pulled over for speeding, and that guy had on a cowboy hat, and he was a city cop from whatever city it was in the oh, middle really? of nowhere. Yeah, it was a speed trap town. 
Yeah, we got a lot of those around here. Yeah, that's all they are. Uh, so uh, the the sheriff or cop or whatever is is questioning Bobby. He's asking if he paid a little visit to uh, Miss Junie Harper's house tonight. Bobby is real sheepish, you know, trying to look back and forth to his dad and stuff. And his dad, you know, shakes his head and and or nods. And Bobby's yes, sir. And so uh, Hank comes to his defense pretty quick. Hank says, does Don't jump all over the boy. The truth is, it's my fault. And then before he could explain anything, Junie B. Harper jumps in and goes, Well, of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah, his antisocial behavior is the result of your whole family's anti Christian values. And that's and what gets Peggy. That's what gets Peggy because, like, Peggy will let you go to a point, but that's once right. you once you mess with her man or her Don't son. Don't mess with her family. And, and that's no. outside of even Luann. Luann doesn't even count in this part of the conversation. Right. If you're messing with Bobby and Hank, it doesn't matter who you you are That's exactly so she right. goes you hold it right there junie harper you are out of order i go to church too and this kills this is my one of my favorite lines of the show i've raffled and bingoed and bake sale my way as close to the good lord as you so don't try to one up me because i will one up yours <laughs> i will one up yours and then they do this back and forth between junie b and him uh and and hank where she goes the complaints to fools will destroy them proverbs get out of my house exodus, exodus. <laughs> Yeah, and then Hank is putting uh, he's putting Bobby to bed, and he says, "You're just a, a old uh, Halloween hellraiser, hellraiser just like, like your old, just man, like your old yeah. man." And then he has to tell him, "But I'm very disappointed in you," so that Peggy can hear it and know that he has kind of punished Bobby. You see a little bit of a grin go across uh, Bobby's face because he knows uh, he still wants to be like his dad. Yeah, for sure. You know, still wants to do all the things his dad does. Uh, and then we, we see it's the next day. This is the 30th. So it's uh, Thursday, October 30th. And Hank and Bobby are driving around, and they see some of the carnage from uh, when they were out to- TPing and, and uh, egging things. Yeah. One of the f- funniest things is the fact that they smashed a birdhouse. And you see the birdhouse on the ground. There's two birds there. And they're still trying to get into the smashed bird house. Yeah, they're still trying to fight their way into it. Yeah. Which I think is very funny. Yeah, that is funny. One of the birds just jams his head right down into the broken birdhouse at this point. But you can see it on Bobby that uh, he, go, he goes, I'll never use toilet paper in anger again. But uh, he is a little disappointed in the fact because he's kind of fighting these two things in himself now. You know, do I go yeah. with my dad and be a hellraiser and do all these things, which... When you look back at what Hank did, it wasn't a whole lot of hell raising, but I get it. Uh, and then on the other hand, you've got Junie Harper and you've got the Lord and you've got all of these bad things and you got the sheriff involved or whoever, right? Yeah. And uh, Bobby is really fighting those demons inside him. That's way on him. Luann stops by Bobby's room. Uh, is the next scene we see, and she's concerned about Bobby because she doesn't hear the TV on. <laughs> yeah, which is funny. And so Bobby has grounded himself. Yeah, uh, which he man shows a lot about Bobby as a person too. That yeah. he knows he did something bad and he feels bad about it. So that's good that he feels bad about it. <laughs> well, he's he's his father's kid, definitely. Yeah, yeah because uh, Hank would do the same thing. He would ground himself from things, probably you know, yeah. keep himself from doing things. I can't use the power tools, that's Peggy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Luann tells him how it's not his fault. It's uh, it's it's uh, Uncle Hank's fault because he's a, he's Satan. a Satanist. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so she's I mean, getting either, she's going left field with it for some, sure. Some 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 huge leaps. She's yeah, taking she's here, going out of yeah. the, out of the field. She's with telling it. Bobby that uh, that Uncle Hank is a Satanist and and uh, well, it's funny. This part right here is Bobby. funny with Bobby too. Yeah, because she goes, "Come on, Luann, that's the craziest thing I ever heard." And then she goes, "It's true." And he goes, "Oh dang!" <laughs> <laughs> like like he, he didn't even he question needed, it. He questioned he it like to, zero convincing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dang. Like, oh dang! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dang. He does it twice that he says that it kills me. So uh, that's why, you know, she's saying that that's why uh, the devil doesn't want you to know the truth. Uh, so he's working through Uncle Hank, you know, that's why he squashed all her ideas and stuff. And then she starts asking Bobby if he's ever, if Hank has ever made him drink blood. He made me eat liver once. He made me eat liver once. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. called a recovered memory. Think, Bobby. What else can you remember? And so the yeah. only thing that Bobby can remember is things that have happened like in the last day. Yeah, that's all you know? it is. <laughs> he's yeah. looking back. Where are the vampires at, and monsters and yeah, ghosts? because they're back in Megalomart, and he's talking about vampires and ghosts yeah, and stuff. You're a regular and Halloween Hellraiser, just like your old man. Yeah. It's just liver. It's not going to kill you. And then he starts to see this, you know, it's just his dad's oh, head his laughing, dad is... and then his head turns into the devil, and yeah. then boom. 
Oh, dang. That's one of my... <laughs> Another oh, dang. That is one of my favorite uh, memes whenever you see Hank is the devil, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, be on the lookout. I'm going to post some. So <laughs> we are back at... Uh, now we're at Arlen City Hall. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Dale, of all people, is up in front of the city council, I guess this is. And he is telling them that uh, the vandalism on his house can only be described as a hate crime. Somebody hates me. Somebody Let hates me. Let the record me. show that somebody hates Dale Dribble. <laughs> they don't even call him by his right name. That's right. That's right. And then you get, of course, Juni Harper standing up. And uh, she's talking about how her, her her house has been attacked by Satanists. Satanists, yeah. Yep. They want to know if he has any evidence. Uh, and she pulls out her damn dead cat. Yeah, right there in She's the got courtroom. She's a cooler, and she pulls out her dead Amazing. cat and dumps it right on the table. Yeah, which uh, the 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 uh, whole city council and everybody in the room is like, just oh gasps. my god, yeah. I mean, who dumps a dead cat? You know, she's doing Junior it just Harper. for yeah, she's doing it just for impact. So uh, now we're back at uh, Hank's house, and they have uh, set up a banner uh, for Hank Hell's. Uh, haunted house and uh again um peggy is a little concerned with she thinks it's perfect but she thinks that hank heck works a lot better just than as hank well Hill. yeah <laughs> yeah works just she's, as well she's really worried about the fact that uh, he's using the word hell uh luann comes out she's very excited because halloween has now been canceled uh she just got off the phone with Junie harper and uh, she said the city council passed a curfew. curfew. Yeah, they passed a freaking curfew. You know, to me, it sounds a little bit like uh, uh, what do you martial law? Yeah, martial law. You know, I mean, if There's you're a curfew on Halloween because Satanists ran over Junie B. Harper's cat. Yeah, and Hank is is uh, like, well, what about the trick or treaters? And Luann's like, oh no, there won't be any trick or treaters because. It, it's been canceled. You said I was wrong, but now everybody agrees with me. And he's like. You don't, not everybody agrees with you. You agree with everybody else. Yeah. That's where we're and at. And he says, you agree with any idiot who says anything. And then Peggy still, and that's why I don't understand, like, yeah. Peggy has stood up for her so hard on this episode, even though there was really no need for it. No, no. Uh, she is standing up for Luann once again. And uh, Hank, Hank tells her, basically, you know, I don't care what anybody says. Tomorrow night, I'm going to show Bobby the true meaning Come of Halloween. Come hell or high water. Yeah. It's a good because, Texas term. Yeah, because uh, Bobby wants him to be at that haunted house. Uh, and the last time he wanted him to be at something so bad. I he woke, woke up, up without, without tonsils. tonsils. And he opens his and mouth then, real wide. Yeah, just to show her. He goes, ah, and opens up his mouth to show her. That and then he she says, this time he may be after your soul to the <laughs> goddamn Luann. Yeah, she is. Uh, she's bought in pretty hard to this thing. Yeah, she's sold. Bobby says he's scared. Uh, and uh, Luann, of course, is like, I know who can help you, Bobby. They look up at the sky like it's a cross. And you see the, you see the telephone pole looking very very much like a cross, like a cross and the, yeah and the the clouds are starting to part and then it pans down and you Miss see a Junie picture harper. of judy harper with her halloween house yeah. i mean her uh, hallelujah house. the hallelujah halloween house. hallelujah house i guess the hallelujah holla bag next thing we are on halloween night this is friday october 31st halloween yep. night and we're looking down rainy street i'm assuming and uh there so. is there is just nothing going on there's a gate that's flopping back and forth but the lights are all basically off you see a a uh, jack-o'-lantern in the the garbage and the only thing that's really going on is this hallelujah house now it may not be on rainy street because i'm sure junie harper lives on a different street but it's right around there yep and here's luann dropping bobby off at the hallelujah house uh bobby's thankful for letting her uh get a <laughs> get him there and he you know he needed to get out because he hears that satan is sacrificed virgins and so he and luann have to be very careful yeah then luann looks very you know like <laughs> uh well maybe one of us hears a virgin so we both be better careful yeah uh so bobby is heading into this uh to this uh, hallelujah house we go back to Hank's house, and Hank and Peggy are sitting out. Uh, this is something that I've done many times. You sit out in your driveway and just kind of watch the world go by. They're waiting for kids to show up for this haunted house. And nobody's showing up. He, he can't believe nobody. that it, people are actually sticking with the curfew, which I don't know what town in Texas they're in, but I know as uh, the town that I live in in Texas, 
if a uh, city government said no Halloween, I think that would cause I think you'd more have a people. Bigger Halloween, you would yeah. have a bigger mm-hmm. Halloween. Yeah. Somebody would throw an event. There would be like multiple events. I mean, it would just be massive. Yeah, yeah. Hank is questioning where Bobby's at because he's like, and, and this yeah, he's is, been gone for a this while. Is funny yeah. to me that he's just like, uh, where is everybody? Oh, and where's Bobby? And where the you heck know? is Bobby? He's and still out with the wind. Yeah. Peggy, Peggy sent them to the store to get more high, high C. C. Yeah. Because she's over there just stirring the punch for which, nobody. Which, for those of you who don't know what high C is, high C is a old fruit punch. I don't think anybody even drinks it anymore, do they? It's like, well, I think they still sell a lot yeah, of high C. Uh, but uh, it is. <gasps> oh, it, it is. They do it in the uh, mm-hmm, fountain drinks. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of the fountain drinks. It's okay. like a diabetic coma versus it's just Kool-Aid. sugar water. I mean, it's, yeah. it's Kool-Aid is is uh, nutritious compared to high C. Yeah, it's color-flavored sugar yeah, water. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, high fructose corn, corn syrup in there. Yeah, that's probably why it's called high C. Can't say that twice. Yeah, high corn syrup. So uh, Hank is very concerned and uh, talking about uh, how nobody in that town has any courage to uh, celebrate, celebrate Halloween. Halloween. And while he's saying that, Dale's looking at him from his living room, I guess, and he's got a bullhorn. And he's like, Hank, can you turn off my hose while you're out there? Yeah. <laughs> so now we transition over to the Hallelujah House. Miss uh, Junie Harper is welcoming all of the would have been trick or treaters to her house. Uh, and she is worried about everybody trying to push their way in because it's so popular. Uh, you know, the last shall be first and blah, blah, blah. Don't, uh, don't push your way in. We then go into Miss Junie B. Harper's house, which is now the Hallelujah house. First thing we see is uh, a couple in the park. And what I'm guessing is a couple of mannequins that yeah. she's set up in her living room here. She's got a beautiful backdrop of like a park. Well, you thought she, it was mannequins. They look like they're real human beings. They may be real human beings. Looks like she got like, it's look like she pet all the ad- weird adults that were in the youth and gr- group. It looks like they're all now acting out a bit, you know. The, the only reason I say that they're not, uh, that their mannequins is they just literally do not they have move no expression the or movement. Time. Yeah, they don't yeah. move. But she and and what is what is amazing to me about this Hallelujah House is how much money this thing must have cost because like this whole set oh, it's production this yeah, whole it's set a pro- it's a production is 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 on a spinner she can like move it around like well it's they say a, she's good at litigating so she might have won some, well, some, some <laughs> money along the way she might have won a bunch of Halloween money yeah. she uh, she spins the whole thing around. And uh, she she talks about before she spins it around. She talks about the couple in the park. Uh, they're about to engage in premarital sex, yeah. and uh, that of course is a sin. And so she spins it around, and now it's the morgue, and it's him and her in the morgue. And she says, "I guess the old saying is true: sex kills." Where is that an old saying? <laughs> yeah, where is that? I've never heard of that. Yeah. So she then takes the uh, the kids or the attendants to the next room. Uh, now we are in her dining room. Uh, this is room. nuts to me. This particular part of the episode <laughs> is nuts. So uh, they say, uh, where's Grandpa? And then... Because it's a family a sudden, sitting down a, at, at dinner. Yeah, a family sitting yeah. down at dinner. Sorry, I forgot to set that part up. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a family sitting down at dinner, and then this dude in a gorilla suit comes out and grabs the... <laughs> Uh, baby, which is a, a doll, grabs oh no, the baby. He's eating the baby. <laughs> yeah, out of the high chair and starts chewing on it. Because <laughs> our ancestors are monkeys. And well, that, that's. Our ancestors are monkeys and they ate babies. Apparently. Yeah, and then they yeah. said, Stop him. And she goes, Honey, we can't. It's against the law to teach creationism. <laughs> 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 it's just so fed up. And yeah, then, it's ridiculous. You know, yeah, it's the only funny. thing that's scary about that is the fact that there's a monkey eating a baby. We're well, the back- whole underlying, uh, like the whole underlying theme of uh, the absurdity of religion, I think, is funny. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in. Uh, in in the thing that always kills me is that the themes in these hallelujah houses or whatever you want to call them, scarier. They're not, but they're adult themes. Yeah. Like. Kids, kids aren't, aren't worried about that. Kids aren't thinking about not it. Halloween. You know, like marital sex ending up in the morgue yeah. or a monkey eating a baby. I mean, yeah, that's not a that's, thing. That's far fetched. Yeah, that's not really a thing. So we're back at Hank's house, and uh, Peggy's coming inside, and here's Luann sitting on the couch eating uh, popcorn, and uh, she goes, uh, she asks her where Bobby is. And oh, the yeah. Land's like, and she spews uh, off this scripted, like, well written, well thought out, scripted uh, response. I think, well, I think that it's better for a child to receive wholesome well, impressions from first established... she tries to she tries to fool Peggy by oh, saying yeah, yeah, that yeah, Bobby's yeah, yeah. at the gym. He's at the gym. That yeah, is, and she starts to act sheepish. I missed and that part. Peggy's yeah. like, uh, Luann, Luann, that's not. 
Yeah, he could have said <laughs> a lot of things, thing. but that was the wrong one. That's right. He ain't at the V. It's at like the gym. she wanted to have to tell her where he was at. Yeah. yeah. And then she tells her that uh, he is at Junie's Harper's. And again, like you said, yeah. she starts she, she starts, starts spouting, spouting off. Stuff well, off. I think that it's better for a child to receive wholesome impressions from established religious authorities than participate in rituals that are conducted by people who don't know they are pawns of the devil. This is not Luann speaking. And it's not Luann speaking no. because Luann probably doesn't, she probably couldn't spell half that sentence, That's let right. alone build. <laughs> she could not build that sentence with that many words and that much thought into it. So this really pisses Peggy oh. off. And this goes back to what I said earlier, where when you're messing with hank and bobby it doesn't matter who yep. you are yep. luann included in that it doesn't matter who you are so she goes little missy you hold it right there i've had it up to here with your baloney i love that i've taken you yeah i like that too yeah. yes very wholesome uh-huh. southern term yeah. yeah i have taken you into my home i have sheltered and fed you if you step between my husband and his son i will cast you out like yesterday's garbage <laughs> like yesterday's garbage she goes from now on you leave the parenting to us we get a magazine we get a about magazine, magazine about, about it, it. that's right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it is it is amazing when Peggy gets all worked up. No, that's great. <laughs> Just yeah. love it. Yeah. All right, so we are uh, back outside now, and and Peggy knows she's got to break some bad news to Hank uh, about Bobby being at Lou Ann Harper's house, or not Lou Ann Harper at uh, Junie Harper's house. And so, of course, the best way to break any bad news to Hank is to bring him a cold beer. Uh, she hands the cold beer to Hank, and then she tells him where Bobby is. Uh, in any other show of any other time, somebody would have done a spit take here. Oh yeah. They would have spit it all out, but, yes. uh, he would, you know, it's, it's cold Alamo. Why would you spit it out? Right. It's cold Alamo. You almost, he goes, I've, you know, I came very close, very close to, to spitting, spitting out, out my beer. beer. Yeah. It's not even, it's not even spitting out my beer. It's just spitting out beer, beer. Like it's, it's this golden elixir that just you can't, can't spit be, it out. Yeah, can't yeah, hit yeah. the ground. No, you no, know, I've no, seen no. that before, uh, coming from a family of a lot of alcoholics. <laughs> I've seen them have the cup full of beer and stumble for 15 minutes. Yeah. like across the yard but never spill a drop oh yeah and i've always yeah. always told that the arm is the best shock absorber in the world <laughs> <laughs> so uh hank gets very upset when he hears this news uh you know they wrecked his haunted house they outlawed my trick-or-treating and now they want to brainwash my boy it's time for somebody, somebody to, to do, do something. something yeah Peggy is very concerned that Hank might go to jail once she sees him back in his tiny little devil costume going it, out into the neighborhood. Yeah, and in his noble pursuit, he says, I knew the risks when I put on the uniform, the like uniform. Batman or something. That's yeah. Right. yeah. I was born in the darkness, Peggy. <laughs> I was created by this. Uh, so Hank is, uh, is going to save this town and uh, bring back some common sense. And so he puts on yeah. the smallest devil costume ever made. And goes out. He puts into, on his devil costume from the childhood, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> and he goes out into the street and just starts repeating trick or treat. And if you're wearing treat, clothes that are too tight and your balls start to sweat, use ballsy. <laughs> ballsy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so this trick or treat thing, uh, Hank is is he's he's on a mission at this point. Yeah, yeah. He's on so his mission. he's marching up and down the uh, uh, the the streets, and he's just screaming trick or treat. Uh, and you start seeing his neighbors, you know, peeking out the door, looking out the windows, all of that stuff. Here comes Boomhauer, and uh, he's... <laughs> oh, this is funny. I don't need no dango costume, man. I could be a dango mom because I'm trying to get out of this box. <laughs> <laughs> he starts doing the mind movements. He does the tug of war and the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, so I said playing tug of war, man. Now you yeah. got Hank and you got Boomhauer out there trudging along. And then here get, comes Bill. Here comes Bill. Here comes a ghost. <laughs> yeah, and then he steps and trips over it and rips a hole in it. And then he <laughs> says, Toga! And then pulls the one, his arm out of it. <laughs> the one thing nice is that, that Bill's ghost at least is all white. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he and does then, uh, he does step on it pretty quickly and turn it into a toga. rips it up. Yeah. And then my next favorite, this is my favorite, this is my next favorite part of this uh <laughs> this show, this episode. Uh we get Dale now, so Dale pops up. So now you got Dale and they have all four of them together and then Dale jumps up and he's like in this like suit and he goes, I'm a high price Washington he's been lobbyist. Prepared for this. <laughs> yeah, he was this ready. The thing. Yeah. I'm a high price Washington lobbyist. Peddling pedal influence. Some influence. Yeah. Peddling influence. Want Who wants candy? candy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now we got the whole crew. They are out there uh marching up and down, uh trying to get Halloween restarted. And uh, they're doing a pretty damn good job of it, to and be then, honest with you. Boom, Luann pops up. 
Yep. And she's in a red shirt tied up like a crop top. And then she's got her she's hair dressed like done, a devil. Than, I guess because her hair was up like horns. So you know, when she did her hair, she kind of reminded me of like a Loki or something. You yeah, know, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she comes out dressed like a devil or or whatever it is that she's dressed as. And then uh, she goes, uh, she says it through tears. Trick or treat, smell my feet. And uh, <laughs> the last part, give me something. Good good day. Day. Yeah, <laughs> she's just so upset. Blubbered yeah. it out. But she knows. I mean, it's all good fun. And now she's out there to support her uncle and everybody else and so they're marching and here come all the other neighbors out and and they're all gonna go to uh junie harper's house now and take care of this thing we go back to junie harper's house and uh he, they're at the end of the hallelujah house tour yeah and then you've got like these all of kids these kids sitting at tables with these adults talking it's to like them. they're trying to buy cars you yeah. know, because uh, you've got these these uh, older guys on there, and they're like, "What's it going to really take weird. to get you into this holiday or yeah, this yeah, Hallelujah yeah, house tonight?" Yeah, yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> so you get this. He goes, "Okay, Susie, what's going to take you to join the Hallelujah Club?" And then it goes to the next table, and it's this guy looking at him. He looks kind of rough. You know, the guy <laughs> looks kind of rough. He's like, "You took the brownie. I didn't make you take the brownie. <laughs> I didn't make you take the brownie." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bobby finally signs on the line of the little certificate that says he's part of the uh, Hallelujah Club. Uh, and then Bobby's only concern is, can he have another brownie? Yeah, that's all he asks about. And then again, Bobby is young and impressionable too. And uh, I don't think he's as dumb as Luann is, but if there's food involved, oh, I think there's a haze. That is going to trip up Bobby. Yeah, every time. I think there's a haze. You, so you Bobby's a, in a brownie, like a brownie stupor right now. Only you thinking throw about a more fruit chocolate. pie or anything oh, with any kind pie, of He would have signed three of them. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's ready to go. But uh, they end up reaching uh, Miss Harper's house and uh, they knock on the door and she's going to go handle it. Uh, they're screaming trick or treat again, and and Bobby's behind her, and he's like, "Go away, Satan!" Yeah. And and Hank, of course, is like, "Bobby, it's just a costume." costume yeah. You know, uh, Miss Harper is is griping about the fact that there's a curfew in effect, Mister Hill. But I guess you have no respect for man's law either, uh, because she's she's referring to the fact that he has no respect for God's law. Yeah. Uh, and then. Uh, Hank goes into telling Bobby how he really wants to spend time with him. Let's go trick or treating, uh, and uh, yeah, this we get get back into the morality. We stuff, do. The, we get back the, into the morality, son. And so he he talks about. I just wanted to. I'm not going to force you to choose, Bobby. I just wanted to spend Halloween with my son, but I guess I can't do that this year. It just tears, tears my, my heart, heart out. out. Yeah. And then here goes Hank, and he pulls out this, pulls out this, this fake rubber, rubber heart. heart. Yeah. yeah, Junie Harper. It's Junie. Yeah, she uh, she she is is just livid about the fact that Hank does that. What do you think you're doing? And then he goes and grabs his he, face he and he pulls goes an eyeball boom, out, just yeah, keeping yeah, an yeah, eye yeah, out yeah. for my son. Oh yeah. mercy, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, she is. Uh, she doesn't want him to encourage the monster and all this stuff. Yeah, this is vile. Come on, Bobby. Yeah. Halloween is there's no fun without you. His dad tells him. Yeah, and and she tells him that basically if he leaves now, he's going to lose the keys to the, the kingdom. The key to the kingdom. Yeah. Whatever I've, the hell that's supposed I've to be. I've heard that a, a thousand times. I've heard life. it a thousand times, but oh. no matter how many times it was explained to me, I never understood it. I felt like I felt like I was Mario looking for a key to save the princess or something yeah. when they would tell me that. I would be like, yeah. well, where's the key? Like, it's a is there thing, a physical man. key? I Being in church as much as I was when I was a kid, I've heard that a million, million times. Uh, and so Hank is just like, come on, son, let's go get some candy. And Harper is like, you're going to go to hell. Um, and and Hank is like, well, you'll get candy. And so, again, Bobby is right there in the middle, and he's really struggling with this with this thing here. He doesn't know whether to go with candy, the devil, or heaven and the angel, but yeah. no, no candy. So, again, this is also one of those, uh, like, uh, it's kind of reminiscent of a conscious with the, yeah. the devil on your shoulder yeah, yeah, and it the, absolutely the angel is, on your you've shoulder. you literally got one dressed like an angel yeah, and one, one dressed like, like a devil. devil. Yeah. And Bobby's just like, okay, stop it. I, I don't care about candy. I just, just want to be, be with, with my, my dad. dad. Yeah. And so they finally end up going off, and uh, Harper is, is so upset. She's like, uh, fine, you go on. Uh, there's more room in heaven for me, uh, which is is basically the way that all these things always shake out. Yeah. Um, if they don't get their way or they're – They scream at you and yeah. you're the devil. Yeah. 
Uh, and so Hank God tells not him, cast judgment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, they don't. They don't read that part. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> uh, he tells Bobby that we got to go home and scare up a costume for him. And you basically got the entire neighborhood now, and they're all yeah, dressed they're all up, dressed and they're up. All Everybody's having a good you. time. And then I don't. But here's here's my issue. Okay, whose house are they getting candy from if the whole neighborhood is out? I think that. It would be well, yeah. Who? Because it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's I, nobody left to give. I out guess candy, there's just yeah. buckets on the front porch of candy. Man, it, I yeah. guess it's one of those take one buckets. And this is a real sweet scene with uh, Bobby and his dad. So they're walking away, and he goes, <laughs> "Hey, Dad, I was just kidding before. I care about candy." I care a lot. I care a, a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. I care a lot. We get our credits and um, we get the happy Halloween, uh, yeah, everyone. Happy Dang Halloween, boom, everybody. man. So, yeah, hallo- happy Halloween on June 1st. That's right. <laughs> 2020. Happy Halloween on June 1st, 2022. Yeah, man, this is a this is a wonderful episode. Uh, it again is is wrapped in that uh, family love and and uh, father son bond yep. kind of thing, and and even you get you get even some some motherly love with Peggy, um, even defending Bobby to Luann, which is which doesn't happen very often. Yeah, but, not very uh, often. Boy, if well, because she does off, overstep her bounds a lot. Screwed. She does overstep her bounds a lot because she is much older than Bobby. You know, yes. she's at least 10, 10 years older than Bobby. You would assume if Bobby's twelve, she's at least twenty two, if not older. Actually, she might be in her mid twenties. They don't ever really discuss her age. I don't think. But uh, she's definitely older than Bobby, no matter how old she is. And she does really put him in some weird predicaments sometimes in these shows. And this is just another example of one of the weird places he ends up hanging out with Luann. I mean, he gets himself into some weird places on his own. He didn't really need her help. <laughs> no, he doesn't need her help getting in trouble. I know that. No, definitely getting no not in at weird all. Places. The boy is boy ain't right. The boy ain't right. The boy ain't right. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> Well, man, uh, we are down another episode. Yep, that was season two, episode four. Yep, we're moving on, moving on to episode five next. Yep. Um, you guys, uh, thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate it. And um, uh, thanks again to our facts checker, uh, insert name here. Um, <laughs> we would love for somebody out there to check our facts because we don't always get it right. We just love this show. And uh, we enjoy doing it for you guys and, and hope that you enjoy it as well. Uh, we got a, a lot, a lot of downloads and um, we, we can't, uh, can't thank you enough for that. Yeah, we appreciate it. So you can find us on social media at B-W-A-A-A-K-O-T-H on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. There you go. We're there. And uh, you can also check out uh, other shows and us at RogueMediaNetwork.com. And Rusty, until next time, we matanye. We matanye indeed, and uh, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye. (laughs) This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story. And just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> Bros and Bros and Heroes. Gonna tell you about pros and foes and heroes. Gonna tell you about. Welcome to One Star Rewind. 
a new podcast about those dreaded one-star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one-star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one-star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. Thank you.